Hello. Um, I do want to disagree with what Alon said yesterday. There's a severe lack of Z's in Vulcanize. <laughs> Um, you know, by committee, though, we should have a slash here, half S, half Z, but um, hello, I'm Mark Young. I get the chance to work at Lunar G. Uh, I've participated in helping to design the loader at various points in time. Um, and this last year, uh, we really wanted to try to spend some time to give you all ability to debug some situations because um, some of us have used validation layers on various apps and all of a sudden your app doesn't have validation layers. Why? So we wanted to talk about some debugging situations you can go through, try to figure out what's going on. And um, for those of you who don't know, the Vulkan loader is kind of like the, the glue that holds Vulkan application together with the layers and the drivers. So it goes out, finds all the layers all the drivers and anything else that's necessary for you to use. There's two kinds of layers. Um, just out of curiosity, how many people here have had issues with layers before? Okay, cool. And those of you who haven't used Vulkan much, you will have issues with layers. Um, <laughs> implicit layers are automatically loaded. And, and especially for you who are gonna develop applications for end users, this means that your end user system might be different than what you tested on. And they sound kind of like, why the heck did um, Kronos come up with these implicit layers that are gonna be added automatically? They do provide a lot of cool functionality. Um, and and they're, by loading them automatically though, the loader does have an option to be able to disable these layers. It's kind of hard to figure out what each layer has said. Here's some special pound define or environment variable I can use to disable them, um, but that's part of the the uh, issue that I've helped try to solve here. Sorry, I'm a little nervous, obviously. Um, one example of an implicit layer is Steam Fossilize. Um, another example is RenderDoc. Some of us have used RenderDoc before. It uses an implicit layer behind the scenes. Um, of course, there's also explicit layers, which you as an application or even as an end user can use. And those examples include like validation layers like Jeremy was just talking about. So from an application standpoint, this is what it kind of looks like for you. There's two different types. There's obviously the instance call chain, there's the device call chain. And a layer can choose to kind of intercept any Vulkan command. It may choose to intercept one, it may choose to intercept every single Vulkan command. And so you can see if there's a, a layer that causes an issue, you know, could be anywhere in there. How do you figure it out? Um, so we chose, at one point, I wrote a little application called BKV, BKV, and the intent was to kind of say, like, this is the state of the, the um, system, but we chose, like, the loader's on everyone's system. Instead of trying to make your end users download another application, let's just throw in some advanced logging into the loader. And so, we have an environment variable, which is very hard to read there, but it's on these screens, VK loader debug. And originally it only had several options, which was error, warn, info, and debug. Recently, we've added layer and driver. So you can get layer and driver specific information out and hopefully like narrow down your issues a lot quicker. So hopefully this is kind of legible. So this is an example where I'm dumping out some of the layer information. And in this case, this is uh, um, searching, it searches for layers during several instances. So any pre-instance call, for example, enumerate instance layers or, or yeah, anything along those lines. And then also during create instance, you're gonna see a search by the loader for whatever implicit and explicit layers are available. And here's an example. You can see in this case that it's searching through like home directories and you know some standard system directories. And it'll even list at the bottom, like uh, the way that layers and drivers are found by uh, the Vulkan loader are these, this concept of a manifest file. And the manifest files are basically just JSON files. So you'll see, okay, here's all the JSON files I found in my system. One of these, in this case, layers might be used. Same thing for drivers. So you can see if you turned on this driver option for loader debugging, you, you will see a list of drivers that are discovered and where they are discovered on your system. Um, 
one important thing to note is again, since there are implicit and explicit layers, they are searched separately. So you will see like you, you can kind of see a spew right now. So I would not recommend turning it on unless you're trying to discover a layer issue, but you will see constant searches, especially in the pre-instance and instance timeframe of your application. Luckily, that's not very long since most of us, once we create an instance, we're done with the loader and we just step, the loader tries to step out of the way. I don't know what's going on here, sorry. Oops, I've been clicking the wrong button. So one other thing that I've added is uh, now, like I showed you that instance call chain at the beginning with all the layers listed, I've started trying to dump out information on what layers it found, found during its discovery. In this case, you can see that it's found device select and validation are inside that call chain. And so you can know that if there's a problem, one of those layers is likely going to be the, the issue. I've also dumped out information now. So whenever you do a create device, it also creates a call chain. But at the very bottom, it's now listing the driver details. So you will know and see, OK, this application has created this call chain. Here's the layers inside of it. And here's the graphics device it's using as part of its uh, uh, rendering. So one of the new features we've added is this concept of filter environment variables. And the reason we've added these is going back to that issue I've talked about before, where sometimes you have a problem with a layer or a driver and you want to be able to turn that driver off or force a specific layer. And so these are meant for debugging and kind of narrowing down what driver or layer is causing you a, a problem on a system. It's also useful though for CI systems. So for example, if you were using a laptop that has an NVIDIA and Intel on it, and you want to force an Intel driver only for a certain scenario, you can use some of these options as well. And they're pretty simple. They're, they're kind of glob files. Again, sorry about the line alignment there. Uh, they're case insensitive. They're comma delimited. They're, they have a simple glob file, so stars. And you can use it, the star format to do a prefix, suffix, uh, substring, or even a whole string match. And then the way I've done it is that the disable environment variable will be uh, analyzed first. So you could say disable everything, and then the enable will be triggered, and it will say except enable this one item. And, and here's an example. So these are the loader layer filter environment variables. They're pretty self-explanatory. There's an enable and disable. And for the disable, I've added some additional options, which are like disable implicit layers, disable explicit layers, or disable all layers. And you want to be careful, though, especially with explicit or all, because, again, an application might be using a layer, synchronization two, for example, that it is depending on. And so if you remove the synchronization two layer and the underlying driver does not support sync two, blam. So just Again, this, this is why these are debug only. Um, for example, the, the, here are some examples like you can disable all explicit layers, you can disable all layers, and then here's an example at the bottom where you disable all explicit, implicit layers except for any that have the name valve in it. Same thing goes for drivers. So, while drivers, the main difference is the name is select versus enable because all drivers are enabled by default, but you can select a specific driver if you wanted or disable specific sets of drivers using the same kind of keys. Okay, so let's use an example of a bad layer. I run cube, it starts up, and I get a sake fault. What can I do? First thing I do, Turn on VK loader debug, set it to layer. I see that we have two layers here. Okay, so my first option after that is I'm gonna disable all my layers. Guess what? Cube works. And I can now see, oh, it's, it's searching for layers, but at the end here, I get all the way down to creation of instance and I get everything I want. So let's go back. Okay, let me disable all layers, but I knew I had Mesa in there. Let me re-enable Mesa. Oh, yep, it still works, and I still see my Mesa implicit layer there. So it's not Mesa, so it must be the other thing. So 
I unremove my filters. I rerun with debug layer. And so you can see here, oh, this is again really badly placed. Excuse me, you might want to refer to one of the side windows. So as part of the layer debug output, whenever it's an implicit layer, I explicitly state it's an implicit layer then it now states what the environment variable is to disable that one layer. And that's what you should use instead. In this case, it's disable override monitor. And so whenever you set that, the loader will then instead say, I am, no matter what this layer says, I am not loading it. And so whenever you go back, you run again, you disable that one layer's um, environment variable and everything's hunky-dory. And so if you have like an end user application, let's say layer XYZ is having issues, you can send out a quick patch to say, set this and it disables that layer for them. You can turn around and build it into your engine if you want, which I don't know if I'd recommend, but it just gives you a little bit more power if you encounter some of these layers. I mean, we've had some funky layers do some different things. And it's just a way of guaranteeing you that you have a little bit more of the control in your hand again, at least as far as debugging goes. So another thing that I've done um, this last iteration over the last few months is I've also written a loader debugging section as well that's in the GitHub. And so if you ever are curious or, or forget these things and you just want to remember, how do I go do that again? Please refer to the GitHub page. We've also written a quick little uh, you know, white paper on how to do this as well. And I just really want to shout out to a couple of things here. Uh, first is Charles Giesen. Um, for those of you who have ever used Vulcan Discord, he's a primary contributor and a moderator on that. He's also currently the primary contributor to the Vulcan Loader. And then we've actually had a lot of good community feedback and PRs lately, so thank you for that. And finally, any questions? Um, this is a link, like uh, Jeremy said, to uh, our white paper doc section. So you should be able to download this presentation or anything else shortly. If not, then I just have the, oops, I'm supposed to have the, I don't have the survey link on this one suddenly. <laughs> oh, well, but the, the, yes, please do fill out the survey. That is a big part of, um, <laughs> that's Christoph. Um, but yeah, so uh, that survey really helps. Yes. I have a question. Okay. Yeah, if you're if you're developing a layer and it's like a shared library, you know, is there a good way to debug that in other words, like, like that? The way I tend to do it is I'll intentionally either put a breakpoint in it, like an assert. And that way it asserts on load. Um, but the other way to do it is if you're using a debug loader, you can step into it. Uh, the best way to do it is um, th there's a function, I think it's called like create instance chain. And that's where it builds up that instance chain of various layers. And you can step into the ones, get into that create instance call, put your breakpoints in there once you're inside. Um, but that's typically what I do other than, I mean, it is probably easier in general for most people because you're not guaranteed to have a, a debug loader unless you build it to just do the ASM in three or some kind of debug assert and then have it break in there and then carry on from there. Okay. I don't think a lot of you will have loader questions, but yeah. <laughs> okay, well, thank you very much.